The basic principle of vacuum injection is to inject resin through dry reinforcement placed between a rigid airtight mold and a flexible film. Vacuum injection can offer distinct advantages to molders. There is minimal capital investment. Existing molds from hand or spray layup can be used. It is adaptable to a range of components of different sizes. Physical properties are improved due to the compression effect from the vacuum. Changes in component design can be incorporated easily. Reinforcement is loaded onto a gel coated mold. The mold can be a modified layup mold. Core materials can be easily accommodated, but the molder should ensure that resin can flow around them and that care is taken over their accuracy and placement in the mold. A galvanized metal coil can be used to create a peripheral channel. If a new mold is made, then this channel can be built into the mold flange. Plastic T-pieces are used to allow easy tube connection. Vacuum bagging tape is placed around the mold. The flange should be free of glass fibers, which may create a leak through the tape. A plastic mesh can be used to aid resin take-up at the end of injection, or be used as a gate to distribute the resin quicker across the mold surface. Use of peel ply allows easy removal of this mesh after demolding. The key to vacuum injection is a textured film which allows excellent resin distribution with no additional layers over the laminate. The molder should ensure that there is enough film to take the shape of the molding. Up to 50% more film than molding area may be required. The film is sealed carefully using the tape. Pleats are used to ensure that there is no bridging of the film. A vacuum is applied and the film checked for leaks. Finally, the film is slit and a tube attached in the center. Resin is fed from the outside tube into the peripheral channel with a vacuum of between 0.6 and 0.8 bar being pulled from the central point. This method has the advantage of quicker fill times, but the disadvantage of a greater risk of drawing air across the laminate if the bag is not sealed properly. An alternative is to feed the resin via the central hose connection and pull the vacuum from the outer channel. When full, the resin inlet is clamped. Some resin is pulled into the outlet catch pot to ensure a full air-free component. This outlet can then either be clamped or the vacuum slowly reduced to a holding level of approximately 0.3 bar. The mold must be held under vacuum until the resin has gelled. Once sufficient cure is attained, the mold is stripped. The part is demolded and then trimmed. However, there are certain limitations on the use of vacuum injection. The setup and preparation time can be significant. Ensuring a vacuum tight setup can take time. The cost of disposables can be significant and there is a loss of laminate thickness due to the compression effect. But vacuum injection is a versatile process which can be adapted to much larger components, such as this dinghy of 10 square meters. However, the principles of the process remain the same. Care in accurate and consistent preparation is the key.